Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Most of us are getting a break from the rain right now, but the flooding threat is expected to continue through Friday. WIMT's Brandon Robinson has the latest on this severe weather alert day. Brandon. Steve, I know it seems odd to be in a severe weather alert day when there's really nothing going on, but we're kind of in between waves of rain that will continue to develop as we head into the next couple of days until that stalled out fr a cold front starts to move and then we'll get a little cool and drier for the weekend. Let's take a look at live pinpoint Doppler radar. Some pop up showers and storms trying to form out there, but the bulk of the rain has moved out. We'll take you on a radar tour here in just a little bit. But we're going to talk about this flash flood warning. Even though the rain has moved out, I'm sure there's still some high water over there for parts of Logan and Mingo counties, the southern uh, parts of both counties until 730 tonight. So again, they would not keep that flash flood warning in place if there wasn't some active flooding going on over there. So we're keeping an eye out for that and we'll continue to monitor that as well. Flood watch was extended early this afternoon to go to 8 o'clock on Friday morning. So that's the amount of confidence that the uh, weather service uh, has in the weather prediction center and the storm prediction centers outlooks there for the next couple of days. We've clouded back up at I-75. Some rain is nearby over toward uh, London and Clay County out that way. US 119 over at Pikeville. A little bit of sunshine there. Blue skies and sunshine outside the WMT studios. It's hot too. Temperatures in the 80s and 90s in some spots, 70s in others. It's also sticky out there, so make sure that you're uh, kind of keeping cool as much as you can. For the rest of the night, make sure you're taking in your WMT weather app with you because you could need it at times heading into the evening. Steve? Brandon, thank you. We are seeing and hearing more about a wrong way crash in Laurel County that killed three people. Surveillance video from the southbound way station between London and Corbin shows a truck headed the wrong way on the interstate, going right by a tractor trailer and another car. The Laurel County 911 center was flooded with calls, some from drivers who say they were nearly hit. It's probably around mile marker 34. There is someone driving on the wrong side of the road. The complete wrong side of the road? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, look at me head on. Police say the driver of that truck was Joshua Poor, a 21-year-old from California. Investigators say they are not sure what he was doing in Kentucky. Today, hundreds of cars lined up at Perry County Central High School for a drive through giveaway. WYMT's Keaton Hall was there as thousands of toys and other items put smiles on many faces. Kids came to Perry Central High School on Wednesday for a free drive through toy distribution. We partnered with G360 and Toys for Tots. They sent us 40,000 toys that uh, our staff at Operation Sharing had to bag up and get ready for the distribution. Christian Appalachian Project partnered with Toys for Tots and Good 360 to distribute the literal tons of toys. Probably close to 75 people here today, and it took all 75 to make this happen, so I appreciate them. This is the third year Christian Appalachian Project has partnered with Toys for Tots. Anthony Wilson is a representative. The Christian Appalachian Program does a fantastic job of helping the local uh, populace here in Kentucky. Just glad that we can be a part of it and sort of be the toy department, that is. While the toy distribution was going on outside, Save the Children was set up inside the school. Today has been a tremendous success. We've seen hundreds of families coming through today. We have over 25 vendors set up with giveaways for families, food, books, toys, bicycles. Save the Children's 100 Days of Reading bus tour made its way to the school, and with it, a message of literacy something near and dear to the event's special guest. Before becoming Miss Kentucky, I was actually a sixth grade social studies teacher, an English teacher, so being with kids is right where I feel at home. So I've had a good time meeting the little ones today, and they've had uh, the opportunity to meet Hank and wear the crown and sash. A special day for the kids in the area. All the hard work that we put in, uh, just one smile makes the difference, but when you get more, that, that, that just means more to us and even more so for those providing the smiles. In Perry County, Keaton Hall, WIMT Mountain News. Certainly a big event, and it wasn't all toys today. Food, school supplies, and more were also provided to all the families in line. A dedication ceremony for the Remembrance Wall at the Korean War Memorial took place on the National Mall today in Washington, D.C. The wall recognizes the more than 36,000 American servicemen and 7,100 members of the Korean augmentation to the U.S. Army who lost their lives in the war. 
Among those in attendance at the ceremony, Korean War veterans, Gold Star families, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, and a delegation from South Korea. Well, congressional lawmakers say major gun manufacturers made more than $1 billion in revenue during the past decade from selling the types of military-style assault weapons used in many deadly mass shootings. This includes the shooting that killed 19 elementary school students in Uvalde, Texas. Democrats on the House Oversight and Reform Committee grilled the heads of two gun manufacturers Lawmakers threatened to issue subpoenas after a third executive from gun company Smith & Wesson failed to appear at today's hearing. CBS's Deborah Alfaron has more from Capitol Hill. I saw the shooter emerge above a second floor roof line and point his long gun at my family and those around us and rapidly fire. Heart-wrenching stories of gun violence were followed by tough questions as firearm manufacturers took the hot seat on Capitol Hill. What are you going to do? It's okay. To make sure that your products don't get into the hands of a white supremacist mass shooter. Executives from Sturm, Ruger and & Company, and Daniel Defense condemned recent gun massacres. Like all Americans, I grieve, you know, when we read about these tragic incidences. But they refused the Democrats' calls to take responsibility. These acts are committed by murderers. The murderers are responsible. You market weapons of war to civilians <clears throat> and children. You make millions by selling them. But when someone pulls the trigger, you refuse to accept responsibility. As expected, partisan passions flared at Wednesday's hearing with Republicans accusing Democrats of going after the Second Amendment. It's insane what you're pushing. It's not going to end well. When those gunfights happen, that blood will be on your hands. We will not be threatened with violence and bloodshed because we want reasonable gun control. The House Democrats are currently working on a package that includes an assault weapons ban, provisions to remove civil case immunity for gun makers, and funding for police. That legislation could come up for a vote next month. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Capitol Hill. If passed in the House, an assault weapons ban is expected to fall short in the evenly divided U.S. Senate. The last time Congress passed a federal assault weapons ban was back in 1994, which expired 10 years later. A source familiar with the matter says House Democrats will not be voting on a series of gun and policing bills this week. The lawmakers had scheduled these bills in the wake of a wave of mass shootings across the United States, but the source says Democrats are going to further negotiate the package. Democratic leaders were hoping to pass the bills before the August recess, but now they are working to finalize a bill that could be passed should the House come back into session during the August recess. The last two former Minneapolis police officers involved in the 2020 killing of George Floyd were sentenced today in federal court. CBS's Adam Duxter has more from outside the courthouse in St. Paul. The mother of former Minneapolis police officer J. Alexander Kang expressed remorse to George Floyd's family after a judge sentenced Kang to three years in prison for violating the civil rights of the 46-year-old black man. Alex's family is so sad that we will not be able to get to see him for a while, but we will see him again. And it does not escape us that Mr. Floyd's family and friends will not. Another ex-officer, Tu Tao, who said in court that he repented while in jail, received three and a half years behind bars for his role in Floyd's death. Both were convicted in February of depriving Floyd of his right to medical care, while Derek Chauvin pressed his knee into Floyd's neck for nine and a half minutes. They were also convicted of failing to intervene to stop Chauvin. I'm saddened, but I suppose we have to take all these little small triumphs and know that we're going to move forward even though they're just little crumbs that they kind of keep giving us. Chauvin pleaded guilty last year and was sentenced to 21 years in federal prison. A fourth former officer, Thomas Lane, was sentenced last week to two and a half years in prison. The judge cited Kang's rookie status in handing down a punishment that was lighter than what was called for in guidelines. He gave Tao, who had more experience, a longer punishment. 
Both Kang and Tao still face a state trial in October. Adam Duxter, CBS News, St. Paul, Minnesota. Legal experts expect they will seek a plea deal that will let them serve both the federal and state sentences at the same time. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, scammers using tech to fake calls from your doctor's office. Expert advice on how to avoid their trap. Four chances for showers and storms are on the way, not just tonight, but for the next couple of days. I'll talk about possible timing and impacts in just a few minutes.